Greetings of the day. Myself, I'm Vinay. Today, I'm going to give a lecture on food and beverage operations. This is third, third or fourth semester. And today, the topic which I'm going to choose is the first unit, the alcoholic beverage. In this, the subtopics are what is called alcoholic beverage. Apart from that, and also what is called the fermentation process is also being explained. In the fermentation process, I'm going to explain what are the uh, things are there, how this fermentation process will uh, will happening. We're going to see in detail in this class. Okay, so so as I told you, the alcoholic beverage is a unit number one. This has a three sub -top, three topics. Today we are going to cover up two and a half two topics in this. Okay, so what is called alcoholic beverage? Now I'm going to see the definition. Any portable liquid, portable is nothing but drinkable, which is safer to drink. Okay, any drink which has 0.5 to 75 percentage, 0.5 to 75 percentage of ethyl alcohol or ethanol is known as alcoholic beverage. It's nothing but any drink which need to have ethyl alcohol or ethanol that content should be 0.5 to 75 percentage and this drink should be safer to be it should be drinkable then it is known as alcoholic beverage here point come is what happens it is what can why only ethyl alcohol there are different kind of alcohols also available when you do the fermentation but we should have only the ethyl alcohol or ethanol should be present and the, you might be seeing there you might be one more doubt here is 0.5 to 75 percentage of alcohol. If more than 75, it lead to it to be danger for the humans. It might person might be going to coma or breath problem, breath prop kind of a problems, so, or you may death might be happen. It's very dangerous, more than 75. Less than 0.5, you cannot consider as alcohol. It can be kind of non-alcoholic, point less than five. So even you didn't get cough syrup, it even it has alcohol. So you might be 0.5 less than that, then it is like non-alcoholic. So, so I repeat finally that in any drink which contain ethyl alcohol or ethanol, the content should be 0.5 to 75 percentage of percentage, then it is drinkable, safer to drink, is known as alcoholic beverage. This is the definition it tells us. So next is about introduction. So when you talk about introduction, so this culture of drinking of alcoholic beverages mostly come from the Western part. As Indians, it's not our part of much of tradition, but yes, in our like books of history of record, you can see the gods used to drink uh, alcoholic beverage made from the grape juice, but still uh, the part of the culture, uh, it's not been much accepted or much encouraged uh, to take in the families or like you know in our society in india but yes it's come from the mostly developed or habits or come from the western part of the world and it's a part of the life so the people used to consume mostly on occasions like you know parties weddings like in you know, a gathering kind of thing even sometimes uh, like you know any sad also people try to uh, they try to celebrate or they try, uh, they try to on the occasion they try to drink this alcoholic beverages Okay, so how what happened? Now let me see what happened when you take this alcohol. When the person consumes the alcohol, it directly goes into the belly or stomach. Once it goes into the stomach, most of cases the person will drink without eating. So the small intestines are empty basically. So when you drink immediately, once it goes into the stomach, it start absorbing into the go into immediately into small intestines. Once you go in intestine, immediately drop into the liver. So this liver, what they do is the capacity try to dilute or it try to digest uh, this uh, digest this alcohol. So what is the capacity of liver? Is basically one glass of wine or one glass of beer or uh, like you know 15 ml of uh, alcohol. Like you know you might be take a vodka for one hour. This is a basic consumption. Uh, like you know for one hour of uh, liver take one hour to 
digester or like you know convert into other product they take one hour so but meantime uh, humans are you know they try to take in you know, a one hour may they might consume very huge might be they go off to half bottle might be finishing or like you know, some people go to three four bottles so uh, like you know beer i'm talking so it's overload to the liver so that is the reason most of people who are drunk like you know who are most of habit to the alcohol they have a very uh, disease or affected mostly damaged by the liver mostly damaged by the liver because of the alcohol is overloaded uh, sorry liver is overloaded all the time most of time because you are drinking more alcohol so that is the thing maximum 15 ml the liver take to consume uh, one hour time they try to digest 15 ml of alcohol this is the capacity of liver okay now whatever the best possibility liver try to uh, digest it and rest of it, they try to pump uh, uh the ones that mix it, uh, sorry ones that dilute they immediately mix into blood stream they try to mix with the blood and uh, enter into from veins it goes to the heart slowly when entering into heart enter heart try to pump to the first to the lungs so when it lungs are full with the alcohol and uh, when the, that is the reason when the person speak to someone the person might be smelling this uh, like you know alcoholic smell yes you when the person drinks or like some you is he getting a smell like you know alcoholic smell so that is the reason because the lungs are full with an alcohol that is the reason so again from the lungs it pump back to the heart now the heart will pump back to all our body the alcohol spread to the all to the body even it goes each and every part but when you enter into the brain or nervous system it became into paralyzed now the effect will be on it try to re, uh, like you know it paralyze the entire the body now that is reason what happened the person immediately he will be not conscious and or not uh, that much uh, concert, uh, focus what exactly is doing he loses uh, we might be seeing in uh, like you know people start falling here and they they not steady when they walking or they don't recognize the people they talk overly or like might be they keep repeating the words or there might be some shouting or some people like you know it's like you know dancing you might be some people crying so they start behaving abnormal because uh, they lose uh, consciousness on the body what exactly they are, they have no idea at all so this impact will be there on the body and and also your blood pressure it releases the nervous it releases all it releases all the your nervous freely so that is the reason your bp will be low so mostly like you know uh, it re- it relax your uh, blood pressure basically so that your reason stress free the person feel as a stress free so you don't feel of much of pressure or the tensions will be relaxed so that is the reason your uh, bp will be uh, made uh, the blood pressure will be uh, like relaxed so that is reason one of the reason so what happened after like you know it's getting dilute at the body almost 24 hours the alcohol power will be remain in your body the alcohol remain in the body almost for 24 hours this should be happening or and also you might be hurting over the like you know next is like you know uh, uh what do you call uh, when you get up in the early in the morning hangover yes the word called hangover morning when you get up in this is a side effect again you might be seeing on the next day in the morning he catching his head a severe headache or might be having vomiting or your dryness of throat or the mouth or uh, diarrhea might be causing this is because uh, when the liver try to dilute uh, uh, like you know it try to digest uh, the alcohol into uh, hydrate uh, like you know d halhydrate so this is a one product which might be side effect to the uh, like you know impact will be there for the next uh, in the morning so this is a some of the action yes we have a one more thing is that if person drink more of alcohol then what happen so it might be cause to seriously go into coma or breathing problem you might be getting breathing or some some cases the person might be die also it's very very dangerous so you should be taking a alcohol in a very limited quantity and in a major way you have to take and like you know you cannot be as you getting your cannot gulp entire thing it will be like you know overload to your body uh, the body cannot take so much in early stages fine but in a long term you will be having a very serious health issues will be coming 
so always uh, you take the alcohol in a limited measured and uh, and even you take when you take in a limited the even the doctor also suggests take a one glass of a wine every day so even it's good for health so in a major way if you drink it's very very good these are two topics which first one is definition and second one is introduction these are two sub topics is been done next one i'm going with the production of alcohol or the fermentation process how the fermentation process happens number 1 so what exactly here is uh, in this content uh, uh, what is called fermentation you might be saying what is called the fermentation fermentation basically uh, you might be seeing uh, this uh, you might be seeing at uh, 10th class uh, sorry you might be uh, seeing in a bakery as you uh, as your first year you need done your bakery so what happened uh, when you do the bakery so when you take a small in a katori you take some yeast some sugar in it yes yes you take some yeast in this i'm sure and uh, you take some yeast uh, some sugar in it and you put some uh, lukewarm water and you just uh, disturb this and start uh, mixing and you leave close the lid you kept on top what happened after some sometimes it will be you're getting things bubbles are coming and like you know yeast is activated so here also what happening this this small box chota katori mein what is happening nothing but the yeast which is there you are wake up thing you are making the wake up by the warm water you are adding the warm water to the yeast it start wake up when you wake up you are adding some sugar to that when you add sugar this yeast will eat the sugar and release the ethyl alcohol and co2 it releases the ethyl alcohol and co2 this is what happened that's the reason you see the bubbles the smell also like you know complete where nice smell and something go like you know cannot sometimes it's very strong odor you might be getting that is called ethyl alcohol so i repeat the the yeast the yeast is you might be need to wake up and some sugar need to be added so the yeast will eat the sugar and release the ethyl alcohol and carbon dioxide is a basic happen the process in fermentation so this is how you should understand this so here there is a chemical form like you can see my cursor when you see my cursor c2 h2o6 c2 h2o6 so this is a basic plus c2 h5oh when you break when you giving some heat uh, when you add some lukewarm water when it uh, like you know when you wake up what happened this breaks into ethyl alcohol plus carbon dioxide nothing but ethyl alcohol formula c2 h5oh plus carbon dioxide co2 this is the basic formula for the fermentation process so i like to give a one more good example for this is you making the bread yes when you make the bread what happened so this whatever the mixture which is has you make a nice dough knead in nice knead after you mix that and you just roll it what happened when you go for proofing the bread will be bulge nicely so why what happened here the whatever sugar there whatever sugar there it been eaten and you releasing the when you eat it down the oven you keep for proofing right so you applying the heat to that so here the c ethyl alcohol is formed in the bread and it's like you know see what you've been released that's the reason your bread will be bulge into big way so same happens here also in second step that's a good example i can give you so as a process the in the sugar is converted into alcohol and you get by the ethyl alcohol and the carbon dioxide you're going to get this one so how much you get by this process alcohol percentage maximum 3 to 4 14 percentage we get from the 3 to 14 percentage generally we get after 14 what happens after 14 Yeast cannot sustain this alcohol. When you get alcohol, now the yeast is uh, eating the sugar and releasing the ethyl alcohol, right? Now ethyl alcohol is been higher, more quantity. This ethyl alcohol, when it reaches maximum fourteen percent of power, this yeast uh, will try to like you know uh, neutralize, or some yeast will die. Will be yeast will be getting died after fourteen fourteen percentage. The fermentation process stops because yeast cannot resist the ethyl alcohol. maximum 14 percentage can resist after that some yeast will most of yeast will be die some yeast will be neutralized will remain but it will not act so fermentation process will stop at 
14 percent is that is reason you take any beverage mostly from fermentation process maximum will be the 14 percentage not more than that because yeast cannot process the ethyl alcohol the alcohol percentage more than 14 that is the main reason so what kind of uh, drinks we can make we can make n number of drinks but which are famous we are going to see in this examples so one is the wine basically you might be seeing this wine uh, wine is made from the grapes you can see this uh, small picture yeah you can see my cursor here this is the grapes from the grapes we put crush okay what we do grapes we crush it and uh, the grape has some sugar yes grapes are sweet so grape has some sugar so we crush the grape we make like mixture like this after making mixture what we do is so we try to uh, Add some yeast to that, then it realize then it releases a ethyl alcohol and say, "What well, see what is left?" Then the wine, then the, it has a ethyl alcohol. There's nothing but it has uh, some wine in it, so it, it turns into wine. So grapes mixture turn into wine by adding the yeast. Next one is barley. You can see this barley. There's a barley fermentation tank. See how the barley barley we make a nice powder. Uh, we, barley has a very little quantity of sugar in it, so we crush the barley and we mix with the water. And after mixing the water, what we do is we add yeast to that. We add yeast to that. When you add the yeast, the sugar is eaten by this ferment yeast uh, and releases ethyl alcohol. This is a alcohol percentage, and see thus they are leaving the CO2 open. This is how this beer is made. From the barley, we make the beer. Same with apple also. We take the apple, apple has little sweetness, yes, that we crushed nicely, we made into juice out of that. That juice, we try to ferment by adding the yeast to that, that is we are going to get is called cider. Same happened with the pear, uh, pears with the peri, honey. Honey is uh, one of the oldest uh, uh, drink which is made from the, it has a very great history of honey because it's uh, one of the most uh, preservative and like, you know, uh, this honey, we try to uh, mix with water. Uh, honey is already sweet. Eh? We try to add some yeast. We dilute with the water. We make a mixture out of that, and we add some yeast to that. This it turn into fermentation. Ke baad it turn into mead. The honey drink is known as mead. Rice from rice we make a sake. Sake is a Japanese. Uh, come from Japani, Japanese. So it's a fermented drink. Basically, it comes from the rice. The rice has been broken. The rice is cooked, basically heated up with a boil, and you made into like you know uh, mash, make kind of porridge, and some added some yeast to that, and add some yeast. It convert into sake. It's a like rice wine. Uh, rind, uh, the wine which is made from the rice is known as sake. It comes from Japan. It's a maximum the fourteen percent each will be there in that. Okay, those are some of the examples the which a drink going to come from there. Okay, you might be having one doubt. So there is some of the drinks which are like, you know, which can go up to 40, 50 percentage or something like, you know, more than 40, yes. But there's a different method being used to, to get that kind of alcoholic power. They try to go for distillation process or sometimes they try to fortify the drink or they try to add some alcohol more power into that. So these are some of the process we'll see in next class. Okay, now we're going to see in the fermentation how this impact will be there. What kind of things are when you, whenever we talk about fermentation, I told yeast to water and I told about sugar. Okay, this I told little thing and on heat also. You should have some proofing a little bit of heat to be applied. So let's see what the impact of these things will be there. First one I'm talking about yeast. Yeast generally we have a two type of yeast. Generally, we have natural yeast and cultured yeast. Natural yeast is made by naturally we get from the soil, plants, even in air also we can get. Uh, yes, and in air may uh, example you might be in air uh, uh, you fall on the grapes like fruits. It might be appeal on as it is air. It might be catching some fruits. So for example, grape. Grape you might be seeing the white color on the grape. That is known as the bloom, actually. The grape, when you see the black grape, but the, the a kind of a, a waxy, a kind of a dull waxy kind of thing you can see on the grape. That is known as the, like, you know, uh, yeast, that natural yeast, or husk, or like, you know, 
when you have a, this barley barley as a husk i husk means a kind of a uh, shelter kind of a kind of a you might be see small powder when you do that the powder will be coming out so that is called like you know grain husk so on that yeast will be there so this help to go for the fermentation process so this is a basically naturally which we will get still this naturally yeast, it is uh, not much in use in uh, but in still in germany or in belgium they try to use the natural yeast to make the fermentation of beer it is like you know, it has a own importance so let's see how this what is the importance of this natural yeast it is basically uh, it's like you know uh, it works in the open condition like example when you do a fermentation process we always keep lid on this you might be seeing some katorika when i'm talking in bakery in example so on katorika upar we put the lid then only it like you know activate it's like culture yeast that is a man made but naturally it's not required any top like it should be open up whatever you do fermentation tanks always kept open you whatever tank you're doing the tank should be open this is a specialty of natural yeast it will be activated in open one open tank there no need to put the lid on the tank second thing it is a weak fermentation it's like you know this yeast cannot be tolerated for any kind of bacteria which is there when you do this for process might be some other bacteria also will be there this bacteria uh, try to dominate or try to kill the yeast it cannot be that is the reason it is very very weak second thing the the alcoholic power also is very less you cannot get uh, not than uh, like you know you cannot reach up to 14 also might be it's very less you get the alcoholic percentage the fermentation is with the fermentation process will be cut off very soonly it does not go for very uh, very stronger version of alcohol you cannot get into that maximum you cannot reach 14 this very weak fermentation might be happen you don't enjoy the much of flavors you don't have great flavors in this but it is always like you know it is presence in the like you know open it will be work in an open condition that is special of natural yeast now as it is a weak and like you know fermentation process is like you know alcohol power is very low in this so man thought why don't you make a some artificial which is made in lab laboratory lab labs so this cultured yeast are made in the laboratory basically labs it's a more of like you know uh, more powerful they are more tolerant to the bacteria and also they can uh, tolerate the sulfur dioxide also basically we add some sulfur dioxide in the fermentation like you know at the time of fermentation to kill this uh, bacteria actually but when you when you act the uh, naturalist cannot take even so2 it cannot take a sulfur dioxide but this man made yeast uh, the cultured yeast can even take that so2 and it is can reach up to 14% maximum it convert the sugar into alcohol that is a specialty of that is a specialty of yeast and when i talk about this yeast we have a different types of yeast we have one is we have a three different types of yeast uh, when i talk about one is saccharomyces cerevisiae next one saccharomyces cerevisiae and saccharomyces alpidus these are three different types of yeast uh, which is man made which is uh, basically commercially at the time of fermentation process we try to use this types of yeast yes but when you, this the this three different types of yeast uh, will have a different impact on the fermentation process and you get different type of quality of the quality of drink you're going to get example when you add the saccharomyces cerevisiae you can see my cursor uh, yeah when you see the saccharomyces cerevisiae it will be used to have the uh, stronger version of beer you by when you add this is to get a stronger beer and it should be act only the warmer temperature that 15 to 20 to 5 degrees the temperature is mean it should be then only activate then one then saccharomyces calvergonis this is the low temperatures basically it should be like you know 5 to 9 degrees by this if you add this kind of piece what happen you get a very uh, what you get you get a very uh, low very low very light beers you're going to get by this calvergonis okay this is a kind of a special yeast we try to use in making wines saccharomyces alpedo is a basically this kind of this kind of yeast we basically used to go for the special for the grapes and the wine does the uh does uh, the specialty of different types of uh, yeast we i don't know it sorry next one is temperature 
so when you talk about the temperature temperature is very very important to activate the yeast or to get the fermentation process on you always need to have a good temperature we should have a temperature should be there for the then only the yeast will work otherwise will yeast will not work at all so temperature is a have we have to give a good temperature most of time i give some of the example the ideal temperature should be 5 to 35 degrees then only fermentation process happens then only yeast will be live yeast will be working when yeast will be working it releases the ethyl alcohol and the co2 carbon dioxide then no otherwise there will be no fermentation process the fermentation does not happen without this temperature but it remains but it every yeast kill a different different types of uh, for the white wine we should give 15 to 20 degrees for the red wine we should give 25 to 30 degrees temperature for uh, light beers we try to give 5 to 9 degrees of temperature for the stronger beer we try to give 15 to 25 degrees of temperature these are some of the examples actually but it should not go beyond 35 Where it cannot resist, uh, or uh, like you know, yeast might be dying if more than thirty-five degrees temperature, or some yeast will remain. If less than five, also yeast will not work. It will be not die, but it will be like neutralized. It will hold it. When the temperature rises to five, like above five, then start activated. The yeast will be activated automatically. That will be like you know conditions, like you know, the temperature is given, then the the enzyme like you know start working again. So now I'm going to tell start the water. So this water impact uh, there basically we have a uh, two types of water. One is hard water and one is soft water. This is the major water, and also we have minerals and spring water. So let me give an a basic kind of an example to understand. There are two type of people here. Number one, we have a very good person, and uh, he is. Uh, Is a very good attitude in terms of whatever you tell, he listen, he take, he try to change accordingly. This is one kind of person. This other person who is very like you know bit of bad attitude kind of example. He don't listen, he don't change, or uh, he is not much in use. Okay, these two type of people are you are there. So same with that happens with the water also. When there is a soft water, there is a nice person as a soft water. So whatever you try to give a thick color, taste. Flavor, this soft water will try to take it. So, in a plain uh, example, uh, just a plain water. Maybe you try to infuse some color. A color will be like blue color. You change the blue color. Give some flavor, apple flavor. It takes apple flavor. So, if you try to give something a sweet taste, you try to give some taste called sweet. It has a, this drink has a very sweet taste to that. So, the same is like that. So, soft water. Always will be adaptable to anything. It can be take what it can be take like you know flavor, color, and taste. It can be take the three things can be take with soft water. So soft water we can make with a good example is we can make a strong beers. We can use this one actually soft water, and we can make very good to use uh, like you know brandies, whiskies, which is very flavorful. It can when we use this one, but whereas the hard water we have some hard water. This uh, we, this person does not take much because this is like you know is already full, is already have some qualities in it. So this hard person, this like you no know, bad attitude guy is already has some mindset. He don't listening. He does not want to change. Same happened with the hard water also. Hard water, it has some impurities. It has some kind of a, like you know roughness in this. It has like uh, uh, like you know calcium, magnesium. Already has something inside. When you give something, it may not change, or it may not be that much influence, or that much effect will be there on the quality of the water. So hard water, we try to use to make a soft drink, soft beverage, or like light beers. For the hard soft, from the hard water, from the hard water, you already full, right? We cannot give much flavor. We cannot give much taste. We cannot give much, uh, like you know, flavor to that. So that is reason the hard water will be also used to make some. By this hard water, we can get some light beers. That is some as example to understand. Okay, you might heard about some spring water. Uh, example, uh, you heard uh, this. Uh, you go to hill stations. In the hill stations, it is very chill. Uh, it's uh, like temperature is very like you know chilled. Uh, like you know, we have like you know under ten degrees of temperature. So what happened? And you never get sweat there if you observe that. So what happens? This air molecules, this is whatever the air which is there in that uh, hill station, it carry the air 
water molecules with us. The air carry the water molecules, and they have a hill station. Now they hit the mountain, and the, from the mountain the water will be coming. This is one of the fresh, refreshed, like you know, very rich, and like you know, it has one kind of unique taste it has. So this spring water example, I can use Scotland. This uh, the most of whiskey, the single malt, or uh, in single malt, there's a river called Glen, Glen Bolkere River, which flow from the highland to the lowland in the Scotland, from the highland to lowland. This from come from the mountains kind of thing, from the spring water. Basically, the spring water has some unique taste. This taste uh, will give you one of the best Scotch whiskey in the world. So this is a example for the spring water minerals. So how much you have a good for you are like you know minerals that makes a rich content of a drink you can make. This is a part of the water. Now I'm coming about the sugar. Now why sugar is required? Sugar act like a food to the yeast. Yeast will eat the sugar. Then only it activate. Then only it releases the ethyl alcohol and carbon dioxide. So that is the reason. Should have compulsory sugar is mandatory to have whatever you drink you're making that content need to have a sugar. Example fruits. If I take one grapes, you have a sugar. If you go with a, like you know, uh, go with a pears, it has some sugar. If you go going to make some like you know, what uh, drinks you can make with better, uh, whatever uh, like example uh, potato. If you take uh, so fruits right, we are talking about fruits. Uh, you take some apple. We can make a cider. Yes, it has a sugar. So whatever fruit you take, that fruit need to have sugar. Then only it when we put that yeast, it eats and releases the ethyl alcohol. Same with vegetables. Vegetables are kya kya kar sakte. Vegetables we have a good of potato, sweet potato. Sweet potato also we can make some drink. Uh, from the potato we get the vodka. Okay. Uh, so any vegetable which has a sweet content, it can be used to make the fermentation process. Best example I have given is the potato. Cereals, it can be like you know rice, wheat, corn, barley. Everything corn is sweet, uh, barley has some little sweet, and like you know uh, uh, even the wheat has little, not very. It's a very mild. So that content of sugar is required. So what happens in this? We'll try to the sugar, whatever it we try to convert into an uh, the starch. Uh, example, as suppose example, we take a potato. Potato, what it is a potato? Potato is a lot of starch. It's like sticky. The starch when we boil, we try to convert the starch into sugar. That happens in the vegetable. That is what happens. So whatever it might be, directly need to have a sugar. Or it need to have a starch at least. Take the starch. We try to convert the starch by boiling into sugar. We convert the starch into sugar. The sugar will be act like a food to the yeast. This is the main agenda. So you can make a drinks with a banana. You can banana also have some sugar. You can make with a mango. Whatever fruit you take that need to have some sugar. Vegetables also. The sugar need to even if sugar does not have a vegetable. Uh, sugar ne vegetable me sugar nahi hai to at least. Uh, the vegetable need to have some starch content, which will be useful to make a drink. Cereals, every cereal has some starch. Even barley, barley also we try to germinate. The starch is converted into sugar. So this kind of things uh, we try to do in this the process. This is the sugar content is mandated. So this is all about the fermentation process. What we discuss today class, and uh, yes, next class I'll be going with the. Uh, uh, Next with the pot still and the patent still. So let me give a small brief on this whatever discuss on the fermentation process. So I'm just the fermentation process is very simple. We need some if we take any product, the product need to have a little bit of sugar content. Plus some yeast is required and temperature. So the sugar product, when we make some yeast to that. The yeast will eat the sugar and release the ethyl alcohol and carbon dioxide. That's the basic fermentation process happens. In this, we have a four basic things. We have water. We require yeast. We require temperature, and we require a sugar. These are the four major ingredients required to make the fermentation process. 
I hope you understand the class and also uh, you any kind of doubts you can also ask me or to, you can call to my phone number. Thank you and uh, thanks to you all.